the Endless Golf Podcast, brought to you by Toyota. And welcome to another edition of the Endless Golf Podcast, presented by Toyota. Joining me is my special guest to talk a little NFL football, and in particular, the Baltimore Ravens, one of the biggest Baltimore Ravens fans ever, and uh, a guy that most of you know as the Stallion, the Stallion Barry Stride. Stallion, welcome to the podcast. Uh, thank you very much, Bobby. The cream rises to the top. Well, I know you've been waiting to talk about the Ravens. Uh, you know, I got to spend Christmas Eve and Christmas with you, and we got to watch a great game on Christmas Day. If you're a Ravens fan, or Christmas night, I should say, it was certainly a great Christmas present for us all. Your family was there. Uh, Kelly was a great hostess and uh, just a wonderful dinner. And, and more importantly, a, a great friendship. Uh, I hadn't seen you in a while. It was great to see the family. And a Ravens win is always a good thing. Uh, especially against the 49ers. And I love beating that Pony League, 20 and 1 against that Pony League over there. And I want them again. Well, you know what, Stan, if, if you get them again, you're going to get them in the Super Bowl. And that is going to be uh, something special, that's for sure. But before we look ahead, let's look back a little bit and, and go back to the offseason. And there was a lot of uh, uncertainty surrounding the Ravens, if you will. And we'll kind of go over the season. And when you look at the offseason last year, you know, there was definitely some doubts whether Lamar Jackson was ever going to be in the Ravens uniform again. In your opinion, what did you think? Did you think he would leave the, the organization? Do you think it was a possibility? And then we they put the tag on him where they were going to get uh, two number one picks for him if somebody did make an offer. Were you surprised that no one made the offer? I'm very surprised nobody made the offer. Look at Atlanta. They just talked about it yesterday that uh, uh, they they thought they could be there with Ritter. <laughs> Are you out of your ever loving mind, Lama? Is the he's not even running that much. He's playing in the pocket. It's ridiculous how nobody. The Jets could have used him. Atlanta could have used him. They should have given up. You could give up four first round picks for an MVP. Uh, I, I'm very surprised. But they were. He wasn't going anywhere because we were going to match anything they had. It didn't matter. Yeah, that's kind of the way I felt. I felt like the Ravens would probably match pretty much any offer, unless it was a ridiculous offer, which could have happened. And you know what? Any offer a team would have uh, offered him right now looks like a bargain. If you look at the other guys who got paid, Justin Herbert, and you look at uh, Joe Burrow um, and then Jalen Hurts, obviously the only one that, re that really has performed and outperformed their contract is Lamar Jackson to this point. And they're all great players in their own right. But Lamar really is a special player. And I really think Lamar has a chip on his shoulder, Barry. You know, from, from the draft, uh, you know, not getting drafted to the end of the first round and everybody calling him not a quarterback. And I, I just think he just continues to uh, uh, prove people wrong. He was on Tom Brady's co a podcast last week, and he kind of mentioned that. And I think he plays with that chip on his shoulder, and that's a good thing. Yeah, um, um, it's not bad for a running back, is he? <laughs> they want him to be a running back. How ridiculous are they? He throws those darts. And you look at some of these replays that when he's just scrambling out of the pocket and he throws a BB and they don't have time to react. So he's throwing a great ball and he's got some people, even though we lost to the Steelers in that second game, uh, you know, they dropped four touchdown passes. That's not Lamar's fault. But Lamar stepped up mentally and physically and he doesn't have to run the ball. And they, they and like the, the 49ers said, we want to keep him uh, lateral. Yeah. Keep him lateral so he stays in the pocket so he can just run around and have guys wide open 30 yards down the field. It's ridiculous. So if the, we're going to kick everybody's tail. Well, once the contract was signed, there were still some questions. Obviously, you've got a new offensive coordinator in Todd Munkin, uh, a lot of new weapons and a lot of uh, new receivers. And you have to say, when he won the MVP back in 2019, he didn't have that many uh, very good receivers. Uh, uh, Mark Andrews was a little banged up at the time at the end of the year. Um, obviously, he had a great year. But Lamar did it a lot more with his legs. This year looks a little bit different, and his progression has been amazing. And, and especially when you look at a new offensive coordinator, a new offense, and new weapons, it took the, the offense a while to get going. But when they got going, boy, it started to look really good. Well, the Really looking good. They're running the ball, still running the ball a lot. And uh, I, I like the way they're running the ball. And even though a lot of our running backs are going down, we're still in having uh, Justin Hill stepping up. Uh, and, and Todd Munkin likes speed. That's why 
You know, I'm not worried about a Dobbins or something like that. I need speed. A, a Mitchell was a fast out of the backfield. And when you need speed, you can go vertically down the field and out and outrun these linebackers. So rather than more of a power running game where they have that with Edwards, but uh, I, I like the uh, progression that they made and uh, <laughs> it's, it's proven out to be good. Well, you look at J.K. Dobbins as he goes down, um, you know, I think with the first game of the year and then, you know, kind of a couple weeks goes by. And we watch preseason and I, I noticed Keaton Mitchell in preseason. This guy had just a certain uh, burst in his game that I hadn't seen in a long time. And uh, he looked really good. Then when – so Dobbins goes down as a few weeks go by, Keith Mitchell gets in the game and he starts to play just a little bit. And you can see he could be a difference maker. And then, unfortunately, he goes down. So now it's back to Justice Hill and Gus Edwards. And it's looked pretty good with those two. And as you mentioned, Justice Hill really has a lot of speed. And he's got some bursts as well. But certainly the, 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 the loss of Dobbins and Keith Mitchell is a big factor for the Ravens. Yeah. But guess what? We got Dalvin next. <laughs> well, that's true too. But we also have Lamar Jackson. And I think it's I think it's safe to say Lamar Jackson makes the running game even better. I mean, when you're trying to figure out on the read options, are you gonna are you gonna look at Lamar? Are you gonna look at the back? I mean, he can open up some holes for those running backs for sure. And then when you look at a guy like Patrick Ricard, he certainly is a, a big uh, a big factor in the running game as well. Oh yeah, he's three hundred and some pounds and he's pancaking people and uh and that's a that's like an extra tackle. So I, I like their philosophy. I like that they didn't get off of the running game, but they opened up the pass and they got some receivers. And Beckham is showing that he has some great hands. I didn't know he, he had that great of hands, but he's been making some great catches, uh, turning over uh, his shoulder, his head from one side to another, and then catching the ball and catching it out of bounds. So he stepped up, and I think he's more of a form uh, like the old days. So I think he's finally healed and he's healthy now. Well, there is a narrative. There was a narrative, I should say, earlier in the year about Lamar Jackson missing on the, on the long ball, the deep balls. And I think he's kind of uh, put that uh, aside a little bit as we go into the Miami game, a lot, a lot more uh, deeper balls hit in that game. And that was a big difference. But I think John Harbaugh had mentioned it uh, too as well. He said that if we can get the long ball going, it just adds another dimension to the offense. So, you know, with, with the receivers that he has, and I think one of the most underrated signings this year has been Nelson Aguilar. He's really had a solid year for the Ravens. Zay Flowers has been just a pleasure to watch. He certainly is a difference maker. But uh, and also the emergence of, of Rashad Bateman. Bateman has uh, stayed healthy most of the year, and he's made some pretty big catches as well. And also likely uh, stepping in for Andrews, and uh, he's uh, making one-handed catches, and uh, and he's stepping up to to fill that void uh, as a safety valve and stuff like that. So he can actually go vertical also. So uh, to get that vertical game and the running game, and you, know, you forget about the defense. The defense. I didn't think that their secondary was going to be as good. I thought they'd be like a 10th ranked defense. Now they're number one. Are you kidding me? And well, we'll Hamilton, get, we'll, Hamilton is unbelievable. Oh, it's we'll just, it makes, me, just, it makes me slobber on myself. Well, we'll get to the defense in just a few moments. But uh, one other thing I want to mention about Lamar. Lamar has, had mentioned this, too, uh, a couple times in different press conferences and and, and throughout the year. Uh, one thing that Todd Munkin has done and John Harbaugh, they've given him a little bit more uh, control of the offense. And that is, you know, input in the offense as well as at the line of scrimmage. You can see him making adjustments at the line of scrimmage. I think he has his teammates behind him. And I think it's not only the, the Ravens offense, Lamar's offense and Todd Munkin's offense. It's a group effort for sure. And I really think that that's been a big difference uh, as far as the offense for the Ravens this year as well. And also they're not going forward on fourth and two, fourth and three. Kick the field goal. You got the Hall of Famer there. Take the three. I think we won a game when we had six field goals. So uh, I like uh, using Justin Tucker a little bit more uh, rather than uh, everybody keying on Lamar and stuff like that. So I like uh, I liked the philosophy of Munkin. Matter of fact, uh, Todd Munkin's wife, uh, introduced herself to me during a Ravens game. She said, uh, it was just, I had to come see what the brass monkey was all about. And she goes, but I'm leaving for four and a half months. I said, well, I said, just time to kick the ball and don't go for it on fourth and three at the goal line. <laughs> all right. The Stallion Berry Stribe at his restaurant, the brass monkey in St. Pink uh, beach. 
Pastor Grill, I was there on Christmas Eve, had a, a wonderful day, great food, a great atmosphere. If you're a Maryland sports fan, you're going to love this place. If you're in, in that area of Florida, uh, definitely stop by and see him and Kelly and and uh, Colton Stoney. They, it's a family affair there. They do a great job. So, uh, Stallion, it's always fun when I get to visit on that side of uh, Florida, that's for sure. Let's flip the other side of the defense now, and let's talk about the Ravens defense. And it really begins with Roquan Smith. When he came in last year, you could see he made a big difference to this team, and that's continued into this year. $100 million was the best money they ever spent on Roquan Smith. That was like uh, drafting another Ray Lewis. He's, him and Patrick Queen are like line, uh, like wide receivers at linebacker. So, and even though Patrick Queen played a lot last week, I didn't think they were going to rest. They rested most of the starters, but he was in there the whole time. And I don't want him to get injured or anything. I didn't want any injuries. But I want those Steelers so bad I can taste it. Well, Patrick Crean has definitely stepped up his game as well. He's been a difference maker on the defense for sure. But one guy that's really stepped up his game this year, and that is Kyle Hamilton. What a difference maker this guy is. Difference maker, playmaker, call him what you want. He's an all-pro, and I'll tell you what, uh, he's, he's a, certainly a great player. And really, when he's in the game, the Ravens' defense becomes special. And what he said was that he's six foot four, and he said, I'm going to – go about 12 to 15 yards down the field, then, then try to throw over me before the safeties come up there. He goes, so he gets a couple picks, gets a couple deflections. They have to run a deeper route. So uh, it really adds uh, depth to keeping them underneath a little bit and uh, and then let them linebackers just drill them. <laughs> well, he's, drill. he's certainly a great – He's certainly great against the run as well, and he can blitz off the edge. Uh, he, he can do it all. This guy just does it all on the football field, that's for sure. Another guy on the, on the defensive side of the ball that's had a great year is Justin Matabuke, and he is, uh, he's, he's made himself some money, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I got a little extra cash since I'm winning <laughs> over 10 wins in Las Vegas. That's like taking candy from a baby. But uh, I'll, I'll donate to that one. Well, it's amazing, Stallion. When we started our show, the Stallion Show, back in 1991, you know, talking about sports betting was a little past say, and I think we were ahead of our times a little bit. But now, you know, it's part of the NFL. It's amazing. Oh, well, it's ridiculous. I could, oh, well, we don't want to sponsor you because uh, you put a point spread on TV. Oh, but what are you all talking about? We are way ahead of the game, baby. Way ahead of the game. Now it's – I can't wait for when they come on air and then they show me the spread. Oh, uh, uh, Titans at Jaguars. Oh, I went to that Jaguars game on Monday night. That was that was like taking candy from a baby. It was just really, it was ridiculous. <laughs> well, let's talk about a couple other guys on the defensive side of the ball that have really had some good, uh, some great years and kind of a surprising a little bit. You look at Jadavian Clowney, you look at uh, Kyle Van Noy, and you look at Brandon Stevens. Brandon Stevens is probably our best corner right now, and he's a guy that was a running back uh, in college, switches to, to uh, safety, now playing corner. Uh, this guy really is a great athlete, and he's another guy who's played extremely well this year. Yeah, he's uh, pretty fast, and uh, I like our corners. You know, I didn't know if our corners were – I didn't know if uh, uh, Humphreys was going to be sound uh, physically uh, uh, to take on the number one receiver, but – they, they're doing really well in, th in that aspect of it. And I like uh, Clowney. <laughs> Just shows you the difference between Cleveland and Baltimore, how much he loved being in Baltimore and the, the excitement and the locker room. And it's more of a family kind of thing there. And uh, it just brings everybody together. And I think he stepped up to the plate and uh, uh, signed him for another year. Yeah, he certainly had a great year, and, and it's, it was definitely a, a nice surprise surprise for Ravens fans, the kind of year these guys have had, and, and they've really stepped up. And it's really been a, a, a team effort on the defensive side of the ball as well. Uh, Mike McDonald has, has done a great job of putting these guys together. Uh, obviously, he's, he's in, the, in the running for some head coaching jobs, as is Todd Munkin and, and I think Anthony Weaver as, as well. Um, so, you know, the Ravens coaching staff has done a, a wonderful job, and it all starts – with John Harbaugh, that's for sure. And we want to say, too, there's some other guys on the other the defensive side. Some of the, the extra the defensive backs, Darby ha, has played well. Millette from we got from the Steelers, he's played well. Geno Stone, 
led the, at one point, I'm not sure if he does now, but at one point he led the NFL in interception. So uh, some guys that maybe you didn't think of in the beginning of the year have really stepped up and made a difference. I like wide receivers playing defensive back. <laughs> I really like that kind of aspect. You know, you you have a – see, I when I was a wide receiver, I couldn't play a secondary because these guys would run right past you. But I really kind of like the aspect of wide receivers going back and making the transition. It shows you the kind of uh, – shows you the kind of class that we have in a depth. It's called deep depth. Earl Weaver always said in baseball, it's deep depth, and that's what we have. And a couple guys on the defensive line, you know, uh, I can tell you right in the middle there, big Michael Pierce just signed a two-year extension. They obviously like what he's done for that defense. So we're going to take a quick break. We'll come back and talk about the playoff run and the Super Bowl run for the Baltimore Ravens with the Stallion, Barry Strive, after this. So stay with us. And now a word from our sponsor. I love a good adventure, and my friends and family do too. So we all drive Toyotas, Tacomas for my rugged buds, and Corollas for my city crew. And I drive a RAV4 that I take camping, shopping, and basically everywhere else. We all picked our Toyotas because they're reliable and efficient and have amazing resale value, saving us money now and down the road. So we can make every day an adventure. Check out buyatoyota.com for deals and inventory. Toyota, let's go places. And welcome back to the Endless Golf Podcast presented by Toyota. Staying with me is the Stallion Barry Stride from the Brass Monkey in St. Pete Beach, Paso Grove area over there. And if you haven't been to the Brass Monkey, as I talked about earlier, definitely stop by and see Barry and Kelly and his family. Um, it's a great place to eat, watch Ravens games, Orioles games, any all the sports action over at the Brass Monkey for sure. And Stallion, we're going to talk about the playoffs and the Super Bowl run for the Ravens in just a few moments. Obviously, we don't know who they're going to play at this point. But before we do, a couple other points I want to make. On the, on the offensive side of the ball for the Ravens, they had some injuries on the offensive line. Ronnie Stanley, who's been banged up the last few years, uh, is starting to get healthy. An interesting move, a great coaching move, I think, by John Harbaugh and his staff. They started to rotate the tackles in there and give those guys a little bit of a break, him and Morgan Moses um, with Macari and Falele. And I think that's made a difference to the offense as well. It's, it's gotten them fresh, and I think they're getting ready for this playoff run. Well, we needed the little break. Some people don't like the break, but I think you need your offensive line to get a little bit healthy and stuff like that because you're, we're going to – I don't know if we're going to face Cleveland or not because we're, we're going to need them healthy with uh, uh, their pass rush. So, uh, But I think I like I like our center a lot. Uh, he's like orchestrates everything. And, uh, and, you know, they said in trying to prepare for the Ravens, Linda Baum already shows you – where they're coming from and and they can't to prepare for the Ravens kind of offense you need three weeks to prepare that's why if you don't have a chance to play them all the time you don't have a shot at trying to prepare for what they're going to do because they can run it they can throw it and they got the defense and they got the pass rush so I'm looking forward to it um I don't think I don't think that anybody can beat us I just want if if the Steelers beat Buffalo, I want to bury them fifty six to three. Uh, <laughs> I'm so tired. I, oh, we beat you twice. Stop. Well, I think all the Ravens fans feel that way for sure. Uh, let's talk a little bit about Mark Andrews. Obviously, he goes down with the injury, and um, that was devastating to see. It was just an awful injury, and you know they're talking about him making his way back sometime. And probably if he comes back, it's going to be if the Ravens go to the Super Bowl. Um, we'll have to see what that, what happens there. But you touched on this earlier. Isaiah Likely has really been a difference maker as well. He stepped up in Mark Andrews' place and just made some big plays. You know, he's a different kind of tight end than, than Andrews. Um, and But I'll tell you what, he's done a great job, and, and you got to give it to the second-year guy. Oh, yeah. he's uh, that's, that's what you have deep depths. And uh, for him to step up because he was dropping passes earlier in the season, and uh, last year he wasn't – getting used to what Mark Andrews did, but he has stepped up and he's got some playing time. And sometimes it it takes a while for you to get into the swing of things. You just can't come off the bench for to, and run two uh two series and then be on the top of your game. You have to play a game or two. And uh I think he's stepped up. Uh so he's gonna be right there. 
you know, one of the things that you mentioned, uh, you know, guys playing, getting reps. I mean, that's important. They don't get that many reps in practice when they're not on the first team. Uh, and, and then when you get a situation like the Pittsburgh game where you got a lot of guys who maybe weren't, wouldn't normally be playing, they get the reps there. They get to play a little bit more. They get a taste of what it's like to be in an NFL game a little bit longer. So I think that could help the Ravens moving uh, forward as well. And one of the other things I want to mention, too, is you got to take your hat off to Eric DaCosta. I think he's executive of the year. If you look what he's done to just put this roster together, I don't, I can't think of a guy who's more deserving. He's done really a, a great job putting this team together and, and making uh, this, this team be able to make a great playoff run. Well, they made the right move with Lamar. They, they, they saw what he had. They weren't going to pay any guaranteed money, uh, stuff like that. Look how Deshaun Watson is stuff. Yeah, you know, he he's overpaid. He I think Flacco's better than he is. I think if I was <laughs> Cleveland, I'd trade Deshaun Watson and keep Flacco because all Flacco needed was a defense and an offensive line. He don't even have that many receivers out there, and he's still producing. Well, you mentioned it, Joe Flacco. What a great story it is, and I know uh, Ravens fans have mixed feelings. We were all pulling for him when when he got the yeah. job and, and and got off his couch and went to Cleveland. We're like. Man, this is great. You know, and you watched him play, and he played really well, and the guy's laying it up. You know, and, and, he's, and he has played tremendous. And I've heard some people uh, say this, and I believe this too. He just doesn't care. He's just slinging it. He has nothing to lose. He said, you know what, I'm, gonna, I'm not afraid to put it up in here. I'm going to let my playmakers uh, make plays. And uh, Amari Cooper's done a great job. He's got a great tight end in Ajabo. He's, uh, he's just done a great job. And I tell you what, he, he's, he's playing. He's just slinging it out there. Let's see what happens. And he's playing free. And when he plays free, if he gets hot, he's pretty scary. Yeah, but you watch Houston this week. They're playing on that artificial surface. You know, I'm a change of surface guy. And Cleveland's defense does not play well away like they do at home. But you watch them blitz him, and he's an immobile quarterback. So they're coming after him. That's why the line's two and a half, baby. That's a trapezoid if I've ever seen it. I'm taking a shot. I'm taking Houston in that game. Well, I'll say this, too. You know, if you watch him play and you've watched him over the last few games, even in the Jets game, he had a couple interceptions there, a couple bad turnovers, and he could have had two or three more for sure. Uh, there again, it gets back to what I was saying earlier about him just slinging it out there and taking chances. And I think Cleveland has got to feel like they have nothing to lose because, they, you know, with, with all the quarterbacks they went through with the injuries, um, that I'm sure that they didn't expect to be where they are right now. And uh, they're playing on the house money right now. And to me, that's the scariest team the Ravens could play. Everybody talks about Buffalo, um, and Buffalo's a good team. But Josh, uh, Josh Allen continues to turn the ball over. He can be hot or cold. Uh, I wor worry more about Cleveland, and not because of Joe Flacco, more because of their defense and because they know us. I mean, it's a team that, that isn't afraid to play us, that's for sure. Well, well, we were up uh, 28 to 14 with eight minutes and 14 seconds to go into the game. And we're throwing the ball. That's not how you do that. You, you're you supposed to run the ball and kill the clock. You don't throw it and it deflects off a guy's helmet and they, they go in for a pick six. That's not the philosophy that you want to deal with. So I thought that was maybe a little bit of a coaching error. I, you should have pounded the ball down our throats a little bit and take some time off the clock. A clock is sometimes your adversary rather than, um, than anything else. So I, I'd like – but if, if Flacco plays us, we will blitz him. <laughs> like eight guys, 10 guys, Bill lets him before he even has a chance to throw the ball. So we're going to come after him, I can tell you that. Well, I'm sure they will, and I'm sure that'll be part of their game plan for sure. Uh, you know, it's kind of interesting to see, you know, the, one of the other narratives that you're hearing now is that everybody, it just, it's like the elephant in the room. Everybody wants to talk about it. What's the difference between this team and 2019? You know, what, the Ravens got the bye. They come in and they look bad in that first round. And they lose, uh, they lose a big game, and it, and it just was a tough, a tough loss for the Ravens. Um, what's different about this team? Number one, I think it's maturity, uh, and and it starts with the quarterback position. Uh, I think, uh, I, like I said this when we started this podcast today, Lamar Jackson looks like a man on a mission, and I expect him to play well, and I expect the uh, Ravens to play well coming off this bye. Well, he said he has to keep a level head, and that's what I like about him. He's using the mental aspect also, rather than saying, I'm the MVP or I'm, I'm ready to go out. He's using the mental aspect. He's keeping a level head. He does have a chip on his shoulder, and he wants to prove everybody wrong. And I go over to some of these people, and they go, he'll never win the big one. I said, 
What are you talking about? He's MVP. <laughs> I mean, well, he's I'm too, tired of hearing be, about he's, it. He's probably two-time MVP is what's going to happen, and it's amazing. And, you know, he just celebrated a birthday this week. The, the, the young man is 27 years old. So if you're a Ravens fan, and, and if you're a Steelers fan, if you're a Cleveland fan, you know, uh, you got to look at our team, or even Cincinnati. I know they got Burrow, but you're looking at a two-time MVP in your division. This guy's only going to get better. I mean, you can tell how much he loves football, how much he loves to compete. Um, if you're a Ravens fan, the future is bright. No matter what happens in this playoff run, we've got a quarterback, and I think a quarterback that we can trust. I think a quarterback that can definitely win any any big game. And, and you know, one of the things about that narrative, too, is he's played so well in prime time. He On Monday Night Football, I don't know what his record is off the top of my head, but when the lights are on, he shines the brightest. Yeah, he, he's 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 the man on a mission, and uh, and I think that they they only have to win one game before they go to the AFC uh, championship game. So uh, the the road is short. It depends on who we play, who we match up against. But I I don't fear anybody. I don't even fear Cleveland. I don't uh, uh, I don't fear Buffalo. Buffalo's hot and cold. I mean, he only threw for maybe like a, a five out of thirteen one week. So I. I don't buy them. I'm not worried about them. Look on the other side, on the NFC side, you know, we saw what San Francisco is and how good they can be throughout the year. Obviously, the Ravens had, a, I think it was five turnovers against them, and, uh, and and they turned them over so many times. A big difference in that game. Brock Purdy just had a, his worst game of the year, and there's a reason for that because our defense played so well. But I tell you, the 49ers will be a tough out if, if the Ravens and the 49ers match up. They're the two favorites right now, and for good reason. They're the best two teams in football, I believe, and I think most people would would agree with that. Um, but it should be interesting on the NFC side. Philadelphia is really struggling. Dallas seems to be playing some pretty good football. You know, Green Bay is a little bit of a surprise. Uh, that, they can't play away. You see, uh, when when they went to a doe team outside, they, they went to outside. They got their tails kicked by Buffalo and all that stuff. So they they beat the Redskins, the, the, the Commanders. I mean, that's ridiculous. I mean, they're on a mission. And if San Francisco was smart, they'd give the ball a lot more to uh, McCafferty because he moved the ball, I guess, just a little bit. Yeah, one of the things you have to look at throughout the year, there's been some games, the Arizona game, it came up a little bit. Uh, Miami ran the ball a little bit, even though we, we dominated that game. There's been some spurts during this year that, you know, our run defense – just looked a little bit spotty. Um, I think a little bit of that is probably by design um, because they don't want to give up the big play and they, and they kind of play a, a little deep in the safeties and stuff. But uh, also it is a little concern if you get against a running team. Pittsburgh ran pretty good against us, although we didn't have a lot of our starters in. Obviously, Roquan wasn't in the game. Um, so, yeah, you're right. A team that runs the ball, you know, could be a threat. But I, I, had, I just have confidence in our defense. I mean, if we've got to stop the run, I think the Ravens will. And I think they're a team. Not only is Lamar Jackson on a mission, I think Roquan Smith, Patrick Queen, and that defense is on a on a mission as well. And I and I like our chances of advancing. That's for sure. Well, the, the Rams were running when that first series were running the balls down our throats. As soon as they get to the ten yard line, they throw the ball three times. <laughs> How dumb is that? That is a. Uh, <laughs> I said, go ahead, keep throwing. Cooper Cup ain't open yet. He'll get open later, but it ain't open yet. You run the ball six yards a clip down our throats before we figured it all out, and then they start throwing the ball. That's that's that was like the 49ers in the Super Bowl. They're running the ball down our throat after that delay. And next thing you know, they get to the four yard line and throw four passes. Are you out of your mind? Uh, sometimes these coaches drive me nuts. That's why well, I should I... be in that's why I should be in the booth. <laughs> well, I think Cleveland is to Baltimore like the Rams are to the 49ers. I think the the, the Rams are a team that's playing pretty well. They got a great quarterback, a veteran quarterback. Uh, they're a young team, but I tell you what, they could do some damage and they might surpri surprise some people here in the playoffs. Yeah, that's going to be a tough game. That's one of the top matchups. Uh, I think, uh, I actually think that Detroit can run the ball on them. I don't know if they can control in the back end of the defense, control Cooper Cup and them, because I think he's healthy now. So that's going to be a really good game. I'm picking Detroit, but I don't like it. But uh, I, I'm taking uh, – they're a dome team, and uh, they're a dome team playing inside. And, you know, when they go outside, they get buried by the buff of our Ravens.
All right. Well, that's that time. Saying, I'm going to ask you this question, and I already know the answer to it. Who are you picking for the first for the Super Bowl matchup, and who are you picking to win the Super Bowl? It's like that's it's like stealing. It's like stealing. <laughs> how how is anybody going to beat us? And 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 our uh, when we're playing at home, uh, unless it's snowing and three feet of snow and the weather is is a factor in that game, I don't see anybody coming close to us. I see I see them burying us, burying them, and I see us covering the spreads, uh, tease it down to pick them, baby. And if I lose, those fans lose, and they ain't losing. I can tell you that. So you got uh, the Ravens got them in the Super Bowl. I got them in the forty nine. Forty nine. It's it's hard to go against the 49ers. I'm gonna I'm gonna say the same thing. I think it's a, a rematch from Christmas night, and I think it's the Ravens and the 49ers. And I think the Ravens win again. It's hard to beat a team twice, especially a good football team. But uh, I, I just think the Ravens are a team of destiny. I think Lamar's on a mission, and uh, I think we got the better quarterback. And I, I think the Ravens will end up in the Super Bowl, and I think they'll win it. You know, and I think uh, it's gonna be a great year for Ravens fans. Don't worry about it. I we got 18 to one. In Vegas. <laughs> you like me well, well, Barry, it's always great catching up with you. And uh, thanks for spending some time with me here on the Endless Golf Podcast presented by Toyota. Until next time, I'll tell you what we'll do. We're going to come back. If the Ravens do advance to the Super Bowl, we'll do another podcast and have our Super Bowl edition right here on the podcast with the Stallion. How's that? Right, stick to the program, baby. We'll go to the promise land. All right. We'll see you next time. So long, everybody. Bingo, baby. The Endless Golf Podcast has been brought to you by Toyota.